My name is Rex West, and I'm going to talk a little bit about continuous multiple importance sampling. In rendering, we are trying to generate photorealistic images, like these. To make these kinds of images, though, we need to simulate how light leaves light sources, bounces around the environment, and reaches the camera. This process is formulated as a light transport integral, and we have to solve one for every pixel in the image. So given some function f, we can integrate it to find out how much of something there is. For some integration problems, like those in rendering, finding the exact solution can be exceptionally difficult. So we can approximate the solution instead using Monte Carlo integration. In Monte Carlo integration, we sample the function randomly and divide by the probability density of choosing that sample to make an estimate of the integral. Each estimate might not be very accurate by itself, but we can average many of these to make an improved estimate. And as we keep increasing the number of samples, we converge on the true solution. However, improving estimates by just taking more samples can be expensive. We can instead improve how the samples are distributed, called a sampling technique. Ideally, we'd want a distribution of samples that is proportional to the function we are integrating, such that higher regions are sampled more often, and lower regions are sampled less often. This is called important sampling. But it can be difficult to design one technique that important samples the entire integrand well. Instead, we can try to combine multiple techniques, for example, one that's good at sampling the left side, one that's good at the middle, and one that's good at sampling the right side. And so now the question is how do we combine them in a way that preserves the strengths of each technique? Veach and Gibas proposed one way to do so, called Multiple Importance Sampling, or MIS. In MIS, we break down the integral into a series of weighted integrals that sum to the original integral. We can then estimate each weighted integral with a different technique. Given this decomposition, and having chosen how to estimate each weighted integral, Veach then considers two options for estimating their sum, one sample MIS and multi-sample MIS. One sample MIS estimates the integral by randomly selecting a technique and a sample from its weighted integral. Each technique is assigned a probability of selection, and from the set of techniques we stochastically select one. From that technique we draw a sample and use it to make an estimate of the integral. In contrast, multi-sample MIS opts to estimate each weighted integral and sum them. From each technique we choose one or more samples, for example, one from the first, three from the second, and maybe two from the last. So given these one sample and multi sample MIS estimators, we would then ideally want to find a weighting function that results in efficient estimators. Veach and Gibas proposed the provably good bounce heuristic that weights each technique proportional to their PDF. In the case of the one sample estimator, the bounce heuristic is not just good, but optimal. So we have a provably good combination of a discrete set of sampling techniques using MIS. However, there are some integration problems that have not just multiple sampling techniques, but a continuum of sampling techniques available. For example, let's say we have a Gaussian distribution. We can parameterize its standard deviation sigma over a range, and each value within the range corresponds to a different Gaussian, resulting in a continuum of possible sampling techniques. So to handle continuums of techniques, we introduce continuous multiple importance sampling which is a generalization of multiple importance sampling to continuums of sampling techniques. For the sake of clarity, we'll refer to Veach's MIS as discrete MIS, or DMIS, here forward. What was a sum over a finite set of weighted integrals in DMIS is now an integral over a continuum in CMIS. In DMIS, we had assigned a discrete sampling technique to each weighted integral. Let's change their visualization a little bit to a 1D color bar where the brighter the color, the higher the sample density. In CMIS, we also assign a sampling technique to each weighted integral, but now that we have a continuum of integrals and techniques, we can use a single higher dimensional space to represent both techniques and samples. Here, each T is a technique identifier, and the plots on the left correspond to scan lines on the right. Like DMIS, CMIS also has a corresponding one sample estimator. In DMIS, we select a technique with some probability, and from it, a sample with some density. In CMIS, as we now have two continuous random variables, x and t, we can sample them according to their joint probability density, giving us an ordinary Monte Carlo estimator for the double integral. The one sample DMIS and CMIS estimators are analogous, 
we normally sample a technique first, which leads to the following factorization of the joint probability density, where we see that the unitless probability of technique selection becomes the probability density, and what was the probability density of a sample for a specific technique is now the conditional probability density. Similar to DMIS, CMIS has a bounce heuristic that is provably optimal, and we provide a proof in the paper. Here, what was a sum over the techniques becomes an integral. So we'd like to use this bounce heuristic in practice, but we need to evaluate this density integral in the denominator. Unfortunately, in many applications, as we will discuss shortly, this integral is not available in closed form. This common issue of evaluating integrals in the denominator may seem like a showstopper, but fortunately, we found a way to stochastically approximate it and still achieve unbiased estimation. And we do so using a new type of MIS that we call stochastic MIS. Given our joint distribution for some technique sample pair, the CMIS bounce heuristic needs us to integrate vertically over the techniques, but this can be very difficult. Instead of directly solving for the integral, we can sample several technique and sample pairs from the joint distribution and can use the techniques of each pair to make Monte Carlo estimates of their weights. As each technique is drawn proportional to its marginal, the estimator in the denominator simplifies to just an average of the conditional sample densities, which in most applications is readily available. If we use these approximated weights in a T-sample CMIS estimator and cancel a few terms, we have the following, which appears to be a multi-sample DMIS estimator with the bounce heuristic, but where the key difference is that the techniques are chosen stochastically. We'll refer to this as stochastic MIS. For more details, a more general form, and a proof of unbiasedness, please see the paper. In stochastic MIS, if we have one set of techniques, we'll have one set of weighted integrals. And if we have another set of techniques, we'll have another set of weighted integrals. For this particular formulation, as we keep increasing the number of technique sample pairs, we'll converge on the CMIS bounce heuristic weights. SMIS as a finite sample approximation of CMIS will play an important role in the applications we're about to look at. But first, a quick recap of what we've looked at so far. MIS lets us combine multiple techniques, but it doesn't work for continuums. Continuous MIS generalizes MIS to continuums and comes with a provably optimal bounce heuristic, but this bounce heuristic can be difficult to evaluate in practice. Stochastic MIS helps to solve that problem by extending MIS to stochastic technique selection, which we leverage to approximate CMIS with the bounce heuristic weights. And so next we'll look at three applications of CMIS in rendering, namely path reuse, spectral rendering, and photon planes. For the first application we have path reuse. In rendering, we want to compute how much light leaves light sources, bounces around the environment, and reaches the camera. This is formulated as a light transport integral over paths, and we can approximate it by sampling paths that light could have traveled. However, random sampling of paths can lead to noise. One option to reduce this noise is to sample more paths, for example, by splitting at a given vertex. But this can be quite expensive. Instead, why not leverage other existing paths, for example, those from other pixels, and reconnect to them, amortizing their sampling cost? All is good on paper, but even connecting to other paths can be expensive. Instead, narrow the reuse down to paths that fall within a certain distance. As the vertices are close, we can forego expensive visibility tests and BSDF reevaluation at the cost of introducing a controllable amount of bias. Traditionally, this problem has been treated as a radiance filtering problem. Keller and colleagues propose to weight nearby paths by applying a filtering kernel, where the kernel is a series of heuristics chosen to reduce bias. For example, by checking if surface normals are similar enough. Their method works well on diffuse materials, but it has some difficulty with glossy surfaces and detailed geometry. Our key observation is that we can treat this path filtering problem as a technique combination one. Given a path, we can split it into a prefix and a suffix. The prefix path conditions the sampling of a suffix path, so we can treat each prefix as a sampling technique. As any path can be a prefix path, we have a continuum of techniques and can apply CMIS theory. So given a set of existing paths, 
like those in the filtering kernel, each representing a technique and sample pair, we can apply SMIS with the bounce heuristic. In fact, our formulation is not just limited to path filtering. If we're willing to pay the cost of visibility testing and BSDF reevaluation, we can achieve an unbiased general path reuse estimator where each connection is weighted with SMIS. For more details, please see the paper. So how do these two methods compare in practice? Here we have a highly glossy spaceship scene rendered with three different methods, given the same time budget. Here on the left, we have path tracing, which acts as a baseline, and for the given time budget, is still fairly noisy. In the middle, we have Keller and colleagues path filtering, where bias due to filtering is visibly noticeable. And on the right, we have our SMIS-based path filtering, which shows not only reduced bias compared to Keller and colleagues technique, but it also shows reduced noise compared to path tracing. Our second application is in spectral rendering. In the previous application, we saw that rendering is formulated as a light transport integral, and we approximate them by sampling paths that light could have traveled. In spectral rendering, we additionally consider how much light is transported for each wavelength. One common way to do this is to sample a wavelength first and then a path based on that wavelength. This lets us naturally treat each wavelength as parameterizing a path sampling technique. As the visible wave space is continuous, this gives us a continuum of path sampling techniques that could have sampled a given path. The distribution of wavelengths often takes into account camera responsivity and the emission profile of light sources. Vilke and colleagues propose to select a first wavelength according to this distribution and then select a set of evenly spaced wavelengths around it. No matter which wavelength of the set you pick first, you get the same set, resulting in a fixed set of techniques. Given this fixed set of techniques, they apply discrete MIS. We'll refer to their method as hero MIS here forward. The even spacing of wavelength samples, however, smooths out their distribution. This prevents the method from effectively important sampling spiky distributions, like those found in fluorescent lights. Since we have a continuum of techniques, we can apply CMIS theory. This gives us the freedom to import and sample not just one, but all wavelengths. Incorporating this kind of important sampling is non-trivial in HERO MIS. However, with CMIS, it is as simple as changing the probability density of sampling techniques. Let's look at how these perform in practice. Here we have a simple scene with a gold dragon lit by a fluorescent light and we'll compare the estimation error of four different methods. Hero MIS, our stochastic MIS using independently sampled wavelengths, our stochastic MIS but using a stratified sampler, and a brute force method. All methods use the same number of paths and four wavelengths per path, with the exception of the brute force method, which uses 512 wavelengths per path to provide a ground truth on color noise. Zooming in, as the fluorescent light has a spiky power distribution, the scene is challenging for Hero MIS, and there is quite a bit of color noise present. In contrast, our two SMIS estimators show reduced color noise, with the stratified version, on the right, being almost visually indistinguishable from the brute force method. Our third application is in photon planes. Another case where a continuum of techniques arises is in single scattering and volume rendering. One way to compute single scattering is photon planes, where an area light source emanates random planes. To generate a plane, Deng and colleagues propose to sample an edge and extrude the edge to generate a plane that is clipped by the light source. When a camera ray intersects this plane, it results in a complete path. But this path could have been generated by a different plane, for example, this one. As each plane is defined by its edge, we can interpret each edge as the technique that parameterizes path sampling. As there are infinitely many possible edges, we have a continuum of path sampling techniques. Deng and colleagues recognized that the set of edges formed a continuum of techniques, so they proposed a closed form integrable weighting heuristic. We can interpret this as an application of CMIS with a closed form non bounce heuristic. Here, they integrate over all edge orientations centered around the intersection point. This alternate weighting scheme provides good results, but as it doesn't take into account the length of each edge, it's suboptimal. 
The optimal bounce heuristic weighting does take into account this edge length, but its normalization integral is not available in closed form. So we can instead apply our SMIS estimator to make an approximation of the full bounce heuristic weights. Here we sample additional edges that are capable of generating the given path, which results in a set of technique sample pairs that we can combine using SMIS. In practice, we found that just sampling one additional plane perpendicular to the first plane works well. So how do these two methods compare? Here we have a boardroom scene lit with several colored area lights and filled with smoke. In the first column, we have the unweighted photon planes estimator. In the second column, we have Deng and colleagues' analytical weights, which shows a large improvement over the unweighted results. In the third column, we have a two-sample SMIS estimator with weights that, similarly to the approximate weights of Deng and colleagues, treat all edges as being equal length. And in the last column, we have the same two-sample SMIS estimator, but using the approximated bounce heuristic weights, which shows even further improvement, providing the lowest error estimates. In some applications, like this one, we have the option to choose between suboptimal weights with a closed form solution or an approximation of the optimal weights. In this case, the latter provides better results, but there may be some problems where the former is more effective. And that wraps up our applications. Let's recap with a quick summary and then close with some potential future work. We introduced continuous multiple importance sampling which generalizes MIS to continuums of techniques and comes with a provably optimal bounce heuristic. We also introduced stochastic MIS, which extends MIS to stochastic technique selection and can be used as an approximation of CMIS with the bounce heuristic. We further showed three applications of CMIS in rendering, including path reuse, spectral rendering, and photon planes. But with all of this, we have really only just scratched the surface. It would be great to have a more thorough understanding of SMIS, including a formal variance analysis and, as the cost of weight evaluation is quadratic with the number of techniques, a way to determine the optimal number of techniques per estimate. There are also many potential applications of CMIS in light transport, including applications where strict limitations are enforced to apply DMIS, for example, the deterministic shift mapping used in gradient domain methods, and applications where we want to make an unbiased estimate but have an unknown sample marginal. For these, an unknown marginal is usually a showstopper, but as we saw in the applications demonstrated, SMIS allows us to formulate an unbiased estimator even in such situations. And that concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.